Previously on My Camera Private Eye. Skip, this is not about being slow. I couldn't breathe. Stuff the bunny. Hey! I want him. You have to quit smoking. Oh, no. When? Now. Minute Man Tobacco's got a new ad campaign and a new poster boy, and I'm in. Got a minute? Got to smoke. You got to smoke? I thought you quit. I did. Try the patch. Are you sure this hammer guy is our spokesman is such a good idea? No, oh, he'll stop dozing around once we toss the big bucks his way. I sure hope you're right, Augie. But I think this hammer is going to be awfully hard to contain. Screw lunch. It looks like Luli's stooly days are over. Virginia may be for lovers, but it's also for smokers. In my case, ex-smoker. As the new poster boy for Minute Man cigarettes, I had to pass muster with the general. You know, I've been uh, perusing that uh, new advertising campaign of yours. And Nathan, I think you're right. Mr. Hammer has that, uh, that wonderful look of the Minute Man. Sir, I couldn't agree with you more. He's an excellent choice. Aha. Uh -huh. But I will not accept an advertising campaign without first getting to know the man behind the image. All right, I'll leave you to it. <clears throat> I, uh, I was very sorry to hear about your son, Lily. Oh, yes, but there are deaths in every battle, are there not? How do you mean? Well, sons die before their fathers, girls die before their time. He was not the last of the Sterlings. The line will continue to go on. That's a relief. Were you close to your son, Luli? Not exactly. I didn't approve of his life choices, nor did he approve of mine. To me, he died long ago. Oh. It's time for the color guard. It was also time for a smoke. Not now, later. If two dead bodies weren't enough proof something was seriously wrong with the Sterling family, George Washington wearing a red coat closed the deal. The general wasn't worth half a billion, he'd be wearing a white coat. Catchy tune. Yeah, in 1776, it was number one with a bullet. Tell me something, Ernie. Does old man Sterling really think he's George Washington? Or did a cherry tree fall on his head? People with too much money have to find something to do with it. And if it makes the general happy to play act his way through life, who cares? It doesn't bother you? This guy's the chairman of a multi-billion dollar empire? Doesn't make his business decisions any less sound. Besides, his eccentricity is disarming. It's good. Well, thanks for the warning. 
I can hardly wait to meet Martha and the rest of the family. Do you want a cigarette? Uh, oh, no thanks. I told you I wasn't hungry. I've got more important things to do. What, missing a rerun of the X-Files? The general specifically requested that we be here, Olivia. Now, you know what father's like when we ignore him. I said we ship the old coot off to a nut house and be done with it. Unfortunately, he's not insane. Well, everybody in Virginia thinks he's insane. Sure, we can find someone to sign the commitment papers. <laughs> Muggsy's right. That is how he's become really embarrassing. He's just not normal. Yeah, you spent all night searching the skies for UFOs, Olivia. You call that normal? Doesn't anybody even care about Luli? He is dead, you know. One bad apple pruned from the family tree. God, Augie, you're cold. Mr. Nathan, Mr. Hammer. Ah, the family Sterling. Ah, Nathan. Machaya. Good evening, Mr. Hammer. I hope you're enjoying our southern hospitality. Well, so far, it's been just Sterling. <laughs> mm. well, hello, Ernie. Darling. Yes, I kissed a Jew. Where's the demerit book? Livia Sterling Randolph, widow. Oh, my camera, single guy. <laughs> You've uh, met Augie and Marcus. The lush is Augie's wife, Muggsy. That's Margaret Baird Sterling, I'll have you remember. Oh, I remember it's just that Muggsy's so charming. <laughs> hey, I told you to stop hitting me. And I told you to stop being so nasty. Ah, has everyone met everyone? Yes, General. Ah, good. To the mess hall, then. Mr. Nathan, you're first. General, Mr. Hammer and Joy. Thank you, General. Livia, Miss Fashion. Muggsy. Your Highness. Mm. Very well. Father? Ah. The dinner conversation with the Sterling family was colder than the winter at Valley Forge. But I was trying to solve a murder and had to bite my lip and forge ahead. Tell me, Olivia, what is your ideal vacation spot? The desert, Area 51. A military place in Nevada? Yeah, Olivia wants to meet some aliens. The aliens have already been here, I told you. They still are, toiling away in our tobacco fields. <laughs> and you wonder why I never come down to dinner. Mr. Nathan, you have a phone call from the Anti-Defamation League, sir? Ah, great. Um, excuse me. Mr. Hammer, do help yourself to a cigarette. Oh, thanks, but uh, I, I'm trying to quit. Well, you don't mind if we smoke, do you? Only if you blow some my way. So you don't mind secondhand smoke? Well, there's very little secondhand around here. <laughs> I mean, you. Manny Morgan, you were supposed to bring the little monster, not drop in for a visit. He refused to come downstairs. Threw a tantrum when I tried to insist. Third is my son. Now I expect him to be presented to me at dinner and at breakfast. No exceptions. I understand that, ma'am, but he doesn't like smelling liquor. Maybe if you could get the hell out of here, you meddlesome Harden, before I fire your sorry little. Really, Muggsy. This woman is literally raising your child. You could at least try to be uh civil. The last time someone was civil to a servant in this house, you were the result. <clears throat> I think it's time for the gentleman to retire. Mr. Hammer. You'll have to forgive my family, Mr. Hammer. I'm afraid that the word polite is absent from their vocabulary. No, no, General. There's nothing to forgive. In fact, it's been a very enlightening evening. <laughs> I'll bet. Ah, the fascinating things you learn just by listening. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, do you go to bed with that wig? No. Just my soul. The smoke bones connected to the head bone. Later that night, I ran into a head case, a USO, an unidentified smoking object, Livia. Hello, boys. Need a light? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Actually, what I need is some fresh air. Mm, well, that's why I come out here. And to get away from the insanity. <laughs> and, of course, to uh, look for the mothership. Oh, catching the express or the local? <laughs> I just found Saturn. Oh, I didn't know it was missing. Mm. Take a look. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Very pretty. <laughs> Tell me something. Were you and your brother Luli very close? Until the general sent him away. Well, why did he do that? He didn't want to be reminded of his failure to produce a proper son, as if fathering a gay son was unmanly. I have seen UFOs, you know. Really? And they always seem to land in the same place, over there, near those trees. Oh. How often did they come here? Two years, ever since the night Third was abducted. Third? Augustus Hancock Sterling the Third. Muggsy's kid. Oh, and he was kidnapped. He was chosen by the aliens. What makes you so sure? I saw lights in the field that night. Augie even said a UFO flew right over his car and dazzled him. After that night, Third was never the same. Hmm. I know. Alien testing changes you. Yeah. You think, uh, think the aliens could keep me away from cigarettes? Oh, yeah. not in Virginia. No? No. Oh, no, no, I, I can't do that. I quit a couple of days ago, and I'm having a little <laughs> trouble. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> of all of the stupid, <laughs> ignorant things for you to do, Damn it! You're both a couple of idiots. Haven't I taught you any better than that? Glad you just can't leave that there for the staff to take care of. Well, then pick it up yourself. What are we what are we supposed to do? Just let them keep it? You should have sent someone else to get it. What if you think fuck? You screw up one more time, and I'm going to have both of your heads. Now get out of here. Right, don't wig out there, we'll leave it. Don't you tell me what to do. You all right, General? Uh, yes, I'm fine. Just having a little debate with my commanders. Do you uh, debate often? Uh, only when necessary. If you'll excuse me, I must uh, go and inspect my troops. Excuse me. While the general went to inspect his troops, I elected to inspect his office, hoping to find what made him flip his wig. And there it was, a filleted floppy. The same disc my murdered client, Artie Chilton, had given me to protect. The disc he planned to give to the grand jury before it was stolen from Nick and Velda. Sorry. Didn't know anyone was in here. Oh, don't mind me. I... I don't mind much anymore. Then you must have worked around here a while. Almost two years. Whiskey? Oh, perfect. Uh, this mess doesn't seem to surprise you, huh? Things get smashed so often, it doesn't pay to be surprised. Arguments that day again is out. Why you stick around? Only one reason. Third, if I leave, who'll take care of him? What about his mother? <laughs> that one's only interested in her liquor. And a knockdown arguments with her husband. They, uh, they must uh, get physical, huh? I'll say. I heard they had the war to end all war. A few days before I got hired. Even knocked over a sideboard downstairs. Nanny Morgan was the only member of the Sterling household who didn't smoke. She was a throwback who liked to throw a few back herself. The next morning, I was reminded that the early bird might catch the worm. But the only worm Muggsy ever caught was at the bottom of a tequila bottle. Good morning. Uh, don't jump to any conclusions. Rough night? Yeah, I ran out of ice. So, oh, Mr. Hammer, you enjoying your role as a minute man? Well, I really haven't decided yet. Where's the rest of the family? Who cares? Can I pour you some breakfast? Yeah, uh, I'll take mine over easy. So tell me something. Does Livia really believe in UFOs? Please don't tell me she bored you with that third as an alien story. You obviously don't believe it. Of course not. She's a fruitcake. Speaking of fruits, when was the last time you saw Luli? Well, now if that's your subtle way of asking, did I kill him? Forget it. I like Luli enough to kill him. Touching. Do yourself a favor, Mr. Hammer. Don't take anything you hear at face value. 
In this family, it can get you into trouble. Look what happened to Luli. I'll make a note. A little early for the Chanel, ain't it, honey? Bite me. So, what's the plugs you've been saying to you about Luli? She didn't like him. How about you? Stop playing detective, Hammer. You're here to get job approval. You just keep your nose out of our family business. I'll just fire your Yankee ass. Really? But don't shoot till you see the whites of my cheeks, pal. I wasn't having much luck upstairs, so I thought I'd cast my line downstairs with the Sterling's longtime handyman. Hello. Howdy. I haven't seen you around here before. Well, actually, I'm a guest at the Sterling's. My name is Mike Hamlin. Hamilton Spencer. Been working here long? Going on 10 minutes, the mower's flooded. No, no, I met on the estate. My whole life, I was born here. How well did you know Luli? Oh, I knew him all right. That was a boy that knew motors. He was a good kid, but he ran with a fast crowd. You know anybody would want to kill him? When there's a death, cops look to the family. You're not just visiting, are you? You're investigating. No, actually, I'm the guy who's being checked out. I'm the new spokesperson for Minuteman. What happened to Puff Puff? I love that rabbit. Oh, don't worry about Puff Puff. He's fine. He's, uh, he's very happy. He's home with his wife and his 38 kids. Just a friendly word of advice, Mr. Hammer. You watch out for these people. What do you mean? Henry Spencer was a disgruntled current employee, Man. so I couldn't read too much into Henry. his word of warning. Forward, Nothing forward. at the Sterling Plantation made sense. How could it? The head of the clan was a Yankee Doodle lunatic. Case took a header from the balcony, a three-story drop to her death. One small step for man, but one giant plunge for this poor, confused girl. I knew this, Livia didn't jump, she was pushed. And I didn't have to look through a telescope to find her killer. Livia, the one lovable Sterling, was at long last off to meet the mothership, courtesy of a killer. A killer, I believed, to be a member of her own family. Livia's brother, Luli, had been gunned down in cold blood, and now Livia had fallen to her death. The cover-up was gearing up. The sterling fortune could buy a verdict of suicide, but I wasn't buying it. Up in Livia's observatory, I was hunting for some alien objects of my own. Evidence. With billions on the line, the obvious motive was greed. But with this crowd, I couldn't rule out murder for spite. One thing I could rule out was suicide. The rust on the railing matched the rust on Livia's clothes. Livia always did want to go out with a bang. Yeah, well, taking a head off a roof takes a lot more guts than drowning yourself in a glass of scotch. Well, staff's all been accounted for. Nobody saw or heard anything until she dove. Oh, it was pushed. Now, Livia was a prime candidate for uh, suicide, Mr. Uh, Hammer. Uh, she was uh, delusional, she was obsessive, <laughs> moody. A candidate, maybe, but did she elect herself dead? Are you implying that one of us pushed her? She's our sister, for God's sake. I think the same person who murdered Luli killed Livia. What makes you think she was murdered anyway? The rust in her clothes, the torn slacks, the scratch on her ankle. Well, that's nothing Livia couldn't have done by just climbing over that railing herself. Maybe she was leaning against the railing. Somebody grabbed her by the ankles and flipped her over the bar. Huh? It's pretty smart there for a male model, huh? Well, for a southern sheriff, you're pretty swift yourself. <laughs> Back home, things were moving swiftly between Nick and Velda. Oh, my, my. Velda, you are glowing. <laughs> You're looking like a freshness of the spring. Thanks, Mike. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? It must be beautiful for you. What do you mean? You are in love. How can you tell? Mm, I can see in your eyes, but don't tell me who's the beautiful guy, the lucky one. 
I will chant, I will burn the incense, and then when you feel deep in your heart, then you tell me. Because love is so beautiful, Velda. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and namaste. Namaste, my. You find anything new? Not in the last 10 minutes. How about you? No. What do you want to have dinner tonight? Um, Johnny Tai? Actually, Johnny got deported. It's a juice bar now. Oh. Where are you going? Coffee. I'll get it. Thanks, anybody. You got it, Tiger Toes. While Velda checked out Nick, I decided it was time to check out the black sheep of the Sterling family, Marcus. Marcus, mind if I join you? I may not be very good company right now. You, uh, taking Livia's death pretty hard, huh? Livia was the only real family I had left, you know. Hey, you still got plenty of relatives. I may have been born in this family, Mr. Hammer, but hell, I don't fit in. Wrong color. That's why my mother moved to Paris. So why didn't you join her? The general paid her to leave me behind. Uh, the question is, who else did the general pay to get rid of Luli and Livia? That's not what happened. So tell me what did. I can't. Marcus. Marcus. Two people are dead. My family and I may not be close, Mr. Hammer, but family is family. That's what Charles Manson said. What I wouldn't give for a smoke. While I was looking for a light, help was on the way. Skip Gleason and Barry Lawrence had arrived in Virginia, also on the trail of Lulie's killer. But these two knights in shining armor came across a couple of damsels in a dress. Hi, ladies, what's wrong? Oh, my God, what happened to you? Come on, listen, you okay? You need a lift? Uh, we gotta help these ladies out. They're in trouble. Let them in the back seat. Chivalry might not be dead, but Skip and Barry were about to learn why it's on the endangered species list. What's going on here? NYPD. Uh-huh. And I'm Clint Eastwood. You wanna see my badge? Let's assume the position, boys. Now you're making a mistake. You got an ID on me. Spread your legs, fat boy. I'm a DA of the city of New York. Right. Fat boy over here is a police captain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See some ID. Come on. I was about to learn something myself. While roaming the mansion in search of a Tootsie Roll, anything to take my mind off smoking, I caught a glimpse out the window. A faint flicker of light. An eerie nightly ritual. Muggsy had traded in her highball glass for a candle. She stood there, weeping over a boulder. Apparently, this dame even has her grief on the rocks. You all right? As Muggsy wobbled back to the house, leaving a river of gin-scented tears in her wake, I paid a visit to her impromptu altar. You never know what you'll find crawling under a rock, but I knew that whoever was buried here, their crawling days were over. decomposed body of a child, one of the grisliest sights I'd seen in a long lifetime in a grisly profession. One more skeleton had tumbled from the Sterling family closet. A secret burial plot. The plot was thickening. So what are we looking at here, Doc? Now you've got the skeletal remains of a baby, approximately 18 to 24 months. I got it. Any guess on the cause of death? No need to guess. 
The skull was badly fractured, and at least a dozen bones were broken. This child was crushed. It's a boy or girl? Yeah, based on the size of the pelvis and the femurs, uh, probably a boy. But I won't know for sure until I get back to the lab. All right. Listen, hey, thanks a lot, Doc. I appreciate it. Gentlemen? All right. Sheriff, you have any record of missing children in these parts? Yeah, Danny Spencer. Kidnapped about two years ago. He disappeared without a trace. It put him about the right age, I think. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Whoa. Think you can run a DNA test on this? Yeah, I guess. All right. All right, we'll stay in touch. Yeah. If this was the missing Spencer child, handyman Henry Spencer's distrust of the Sterlings was beginning to make sense. They got cars out there and everything. What's going on here? I don't know. Mr. Hammer, why did the sheriff send us back inside? Mr. Hammer, do tell us what's going on. There's a body buried out by the oak tree. What, what body? We don't know yet, but it's been there a long time. Well, then how the hell did you find it? Ah, what are they doing? Oh, make him stop, Mr. Hammer. Make him stop, please. On, you can't let him do it. You can't let him do it, do please. What? You can't let him set you back upstairs. Oh, he's a baby. They can't find out about the baby. You what baby? Come on, stop, Angie. What? Know what she's saying. Oh, he's he's no one. Mark, Mr. Hammer. Hammer. There's no credence in the hysterical ranting of a female. I never said it wasn't a baby. Muggsy knew. She's obviously spent some time at the gravesite. No, she spent more time at the liquor cabinet. Who's buried in that field, General? Mr. Hammer, I don't believe that you reflect the qualities that I want in my minute, man. You mean the truth? Well, let me tell you something, General. You cannot cover this up forever. One of these days, the cops are going to show up at that door with a stack of arrest warrants, and you're not going to be able to stop them. I stop the British at Trenton. I shall stop this. You're deluding yourself, General, about a lot of things. Do you remember how cold it was at Valley Forge? Oh, like it was yesterday. Well, it's a hell of a lot colder in Sing Sing. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Hammer, you have a phone call. Sir, please. Thanks. Thank you, Nigel. Hello? Mike. Hey, it's Skip. Hey, Skippy. What's up? Well, uh, now we heard about Olivia Sterling's death. Laura's decided you want to continue an investigation of Luli down here. You're in Virginia? Uh, yeah. Where are you staying? Well, that's just it, Mike. We're, uh, well, we got, uh, you see, we're, we're in county jail, Mike. What? No, no, I'm on the phone. Uh, yeah, well, we got a, we got a hearing tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Can you get us out? Us? You and Barry? Yeah, uh, want to say hi? <laughs> yeah, us. I'll see you in court. The next morning, I met Sheriff Delavoy for a sad chat with the grieving Spencers. How you doing? Uh, honey, this is Mike Hammond, the detective I was telling you about. Mrs. Spencer? How do you do? Sorry to have to ask you to come down here like this, Bertie. It's okay, Tony. You have to know. Danny had been snatched from his crib in the middle of the night. Bertie's baby book held a snippet from Danny's first and only haircut. If it matched the hair I found in the Sterling's front yard, the Spencer's worst fears would be confirmed. How long will this take, Sheriff? Only a few minutes if it's not a match. If the hair is similar, only DNA is going to let us know for sure. So what you have a seat, all right? Excuse me, Mr. Hammer. Thanks, Sheriff. It's hard, Mr. Hammer, not knowing. You can never let go. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. For what? For putting this nightmare to an end. You must miss Danny a lot. Just every minute of every day. Are you okay to talk about this? We'd gone to bed around nine. Danny was asleep in his crib in the next room. 
I went upstairs to check on him and he was just gone. Do you remember what time that was? <laughs> I'll never forget it. It was just a few minutes after three. Sheriff Delaboy couldn't find his ass in an outhouse. So Danny never existed. It's not Danny. What do you mean? It's not your son. The hair don't match. Sure, can I see you? Yeah. Do me a favor. Take this hair sample and check it against the deceased. Where'd this come from? Just do it. I guarantee you, if that's a match, you're going to be a hero. All right. Meanwhile, back in New York, there was trouble in paradise. A sudden cold front had blown through the office love nest. Nikki, sweetie, can you get me some coffee? Yeah. While the lovebirds froze, the Virginia jailbirds steamed. Well, I don't believe it. I just cannot wait to hear what happened. <laughs> My it's his fault. My fault? You're the one that pulled over. Hey, you're the one who said give him some money. I said don't give him money. Hey, did they or did they not look hungry to you? Well, the next time you want to feed something, go to a zoo. Boys, boys, but stop the bickering and tell me the story. Well, there were these two women. They were walking along the side of this road out in the middle of absolute nowhere. And this guy thinks maybe they're in trouble. Well, they were. Oh, shut up. Now, you shut up. So they said they were robbed, and uh, they looked pretty beat up. So I gave them 40 bucks and offered them a lift. How could you be so stupid? Oh, shut up. I didn't know they were prostitutes. Boy prostitutes. Shut up. So... <laughs> what? They looked like they were girls. <laughs> Even you said they were girls. <laughs> well, they did have nice legs. <laughs> Don't laugh at us. Who's laughing? <laughs> How could you have fallen for that? Hmm. What about you? You're the one who said, make yourself comfortable in the back seat. And you keep a lid on this. This could ruin my career. You won't need my help to do that, Barry. All right, Nancy girls. Time for your day in court. Go ahead. Judge friendly? Depends on what kind of a night he had. Norman County versus Barry Lawrence and Marion Gleason. Homosexual solicitation, two counts. How do you plead? Not guilty. Not guilty. All right. Trial is set uh, a week from Tuesday. Excuse me, Your Honor. What about bail? Bail is denied. Take them away. Deny it? How can he deny bail? Because I don't believe you'll stay for trial. The minute I let you go, you Yankee twinks will prance right back to New York. Uh, do you have any idea who I am? I happen to have some very powerful friends, and I could have you removed from that bench with two phone calls, count them, two. You better watch your mouth, son. I'll put you in jail for life without making any phone calls. But, Your Honor... I find you both in contempt of court. Contempt? Yes, contempt. Between now and your court date, you'll be working on the Norman County chain gang, and you'll learn everything you never wanted to know about keeping America beautiful. Your Honor, may I say something on behalf of the defense? No! Next case. With a bang of his gavel, Judge Restivo shipped Barry and Skip off to the rock pile. I was headed back to the plantation to kick over a few more rocks myself. But the company loaner was as empty as Muggsy's liquor cabinet. Where's a cab when you need one? I had no gas, no smokes, and no patience. Maybe I could thumb a ride with the plane. I decided I better go looking for civilization. I was out in the middle of nowhere, but I wasn't alone. The crop duster circled over my dead car like a giant silver vulture. I should have taken that as an omen.
so much for the friendly skies. As the song says, you always hurt the one you love. <clears throat> what? Can you give me some coffee? Get your own damn coffee. Ow, Velda! Tell him, Mike. Nick and Velda's skirmish was a prelude to the major battle about to begin. I hitched a ride back to the plantation in search of a modern-day Benedict Arnold the general's oldest son, Augie. I told you the gun. And I told you you couldn't cover it up forever. Now, where's Augie? Probably sobering up Muggsy for public display. Well, that's impossible. Muggsy just tried to land a plane on my head and landed on hers instead. Now, where is Augie? In the house the last time I saw him. Muggsy won't be using her frequent flyer miles, Augie. I warned her not to drink and fly. Too bad she didn't listen. Yeah, I always knew Muggsy was gonna crack up sooner or later. I just uh, didn't expect she'd do it in a plane. What's going on in here? Stay out of this, Marcus. You don't want to get involved. In what? Murder. He killed Livia and he killed Luli. Augie! Why? To cover the death of a child. That'll be enough, Mr. Hammer. No. I want to hear this. You and Muggsy used to fight all the time. Matter of fact, one night about two years ago, you were having a terrible fight. You were both very drunk and very angry. You forgot that your son, Third, was playing in the same room. So when the sideboard fell over and you found his crushed body underneath, you thought you'd better bury him in the field outside. Olivia well, saw that. She saw your flashlights and thought they were UFOs. That's why the next morning she told everybody that she thought Third had been abducted by aliens. You see, Augie, you were worried that if you didn't have an heir to the family fortune, you were going to be disinherited. So you tried to convince everybody that Danny Spencer was your real son. That hound won't hunt, Mr. Hammer. Your hunting days are over, pal. I gave a hair sample from the child you call third to Sheriff Delavoy. The DNA doesn't lie. That child is really Danny Spencer. Oi, tell me this isn't true. Take your gun out and toss it on the couch, Mr. Hammer. Easy. Now what the hell are you doing? Just protecting our interests, Marcus. That's why you killed your brother Lily when he threatened to give the disc to the grand jury. Hey, bro. Augie. Livia started spilling her secrets. You tossed her over the balcony like last week's garbage. Well, it's a great story, Mr. Hammer. It's just a pity no one's going to hear it. I heard it. The boy that we call third will inherit the Sterling's fortune, whoever that might be. And on the other hand, you get nothing. You think I'm going to stand for that, you crazy old coot? I ordered you to protect the family, not kill them off to protect our dirty little secrets. I'm gonna take those wooden teeth and shove them right down your throat! Augie Sterling was an evil man, a multiple murderer who killed his own family, a man who helped line his pockets on the cancerous lungs of millions. Now he was dead from one of my bullets. Remorse? Regrets? Yeah, I had regrets. To paraphrase Nathan Hale, I regret I had but one life to take for my country. Even though I'd lost my job as the Minuteman Glamour Boy, I still wanted to chain smoke. At least I wasn't on the chain gang. What are you throwing over on my side for? <laughs> hey, you, pretty boy, get back to work. All right. Skip and Barry paid their debt to society and then ran to the airport for the first flight home. At Lou's bar, for some reason, they claimed I owed them a debt. 
Me? Why? What did I have to do with it? You left us in Virginia. Yeah, you drove by and waved to us. I made reservations at Gallagher's, 10 o'clock. <laughs> Sorry, fellas, but Gallagher's is outside my price range. Not tonight, it isn't. Be there. Knock yourself out. I was feeling pretty good. I just cracked the biggest case of my life. Barry had done time in jail, and I had proved to myself I could quit smoking if I wanted. So what the hell? Why not light one up? Thank <laughs> you.